is in this video we are going to see the swapping technique followed by the memory management so what is a swapping uh, a process uh, when uh, a process will be swapped out of the memory in some cases that we will be seeing in the demand paging and segmentation all those things will be seen so a swapping uh, using the swapping uh, it can uh, the purpose of the swapping is uh, the the user memory even if it is larger than the physical memory still the user can, will be able to execute his pro the, uh, the program in the main memory again i'll repeat even if the main memory is smaller than the user memory that is user memory is larger than the main memory still is able to run the program in the main memory by a technique called swapping in the previous video we have seen overlay one of the technique is overlay where even if the user memory the user space process occupies more space but still they, it, it is able to run in the main memory even if it is smaller than it uh, by using the technique called overlay so another technique is swapping where the routine which is not at all needed or some of the routines may be idle for some time so those routines can be swapped out of the memory and it will be put in a another memory called fast disk and from there when it is needed only it will be at that time it will be swapped into the main memory so that is one another technique called swapping so a process must be uh, we all know a process must be in the main memory for it to be executed so a process can be swapped temporarily out of memory to a backing store uh, and then brought back into the memory for continued education uh, execution so the backing store is nothing but another fast disk which is large enough to accommodate copies of all memory images of the users all the users so for example five process is there now all the five process it uh, memory image the fast in fast this can hold so it is large enough in such a way that it will be uh, it has a memory more than the main memory so it it will be able to store the all the it must have that much capacity to store the all the users uh, process so it must and not only that it must provide direct access to this memory images so it can be directly accessed system maintains a ready queue so uh, of ready to run process which have memory images on the disk okay it maintains a ready queue when the process is ready it will be uh, 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 the system maintains a ready queue where the process which are ready to run will be placed on that and the cpu scheduler what what it do is already we have seen in the process scheduling the cpu how it will take the process it will uh, take the process from the ready queue and start executing the process and that is process is called as dispatcher that is whenever the cpu scheduler decides to execute a process it calls a dispatcher dispatcher is another routine where it will first checks to see whether the next process in the queue is in memory so what the dispatcher will do uh, it, it first see it, it will uh, check the uh, the one which is in the uh, uh, front end of the queue ready queue then it will check whether it is already present in the main memory or not if it is present then it will give it to the cpu scheduler no so that cpu scheduler start executing but if it is not present there then the what the dispatcher will, and it is very much needed then what the dispatcher will do it will swap a process which is idle which is not uh, executing frequently from the main memory and swap it to the fast memory which is nothing but uh, this now we have store called backing store so the dispatcher checks to see whether the next process in the queue is in memory if not and there is no free memory region the dispatcher swaps out because if there is space no problem it will be swapped in but if in the main memory there is no space means that the newly arrival process uh, uh, it has to be placed in the main memory so for that what we will do 
already existing process in the brain memory which is occupying the spaces unnecessarily maybe its requirement may be after some time so but at this current time it may not be needed so that process the one which is nodded which is which does not need the attention of the cpu will be swapped out from the main memory and put it in the backing store in that place the dispatcher will places the ready process and put it in that pro uh, put it in that place which is the swapped out place so now that process gets the main memory and the cpu can execute that process remember always the process which is in the main memory only will get the cpu attention and uh, the cpu will execute only the information which is present in the main memory that is why we are swapping out the uh, one which are needed which does not need the immediate execution will be swapped out and then the one which is the ready queue it is ready it has all the resources with it for it to be executed that will be brought into that place and now the cpu scheduler start executing that so the dispatch is swaps out if not and there is no free memory region the dispatch swaps out the process currently in memory and swaps in the desired process the one which is which is having all the resources ready so that is why we call it as a ready queue. So it then reloads the registers and transfers control to the selected process. So this is nothing. So when it uh, remove one process to the uh, backing store and brought in the new process, that you can call it as a context switch. Okay. So in context switch, what is the what are the things that will be done in the program control block? Each context switch, what are each process will have a PCB. In that, when a context switch takes place, then uh, the respective register contents, all the parameters, everything will be stored. So that when it is called a swap in again into the main memory, all those, uh, because it will be stopped somewhere. Okay, that is why it has been swapped. It, it, because it, it does not need the attention of the CPU now, that's all. But it will be, it requires that uh, CPU scheduler after some time. So in that case, we cannot it cannot run again that will be a waste so that is why we store everything when you transfer a process from the main memory to the backing store you place in pcb along with that uh, process a pcb will be created in that all the parameters at that time what is the para when it is swapped out what is the value of the parameters everything will be stored so when it gains again the main memory all those values will be placed in the respective temporary registers. That is what here. So when the process is moved from the backing store to the main memory, uh, that PCB value or uh, PCB uh, consists of different register uh, values, those things will be transferred. That is what here. It then reloads registers and transfer control to the selected process. Then uh, priority based scheduling algorithm there is a method called roll out and roll in of the swapping it's one of the variant of the swapping so that is used what is meant by this priority base how it is handled in priority based scheduling algorithm swapping in low priority for example there are low we know in priority scheduling it fixes the priority for the process as low priority high priority and all. so when a high priority comes to the ready queue the low priority will be swapped out and then it will be placed in the backing store and the high priority will be loaded and executed. So that is the that is, in there we call it as rollout and roll in. Normally, a process that is swapped out will be swapped back into the same memory space that is occupied previously. That is what uh, normally, say for example, from 0 to 5 location uh, when the process occupies before swapping means after swapping also it tries to occupy in the same space this happens only if uh, binding is done at assembly and load time or load time then the process cannot be moved to different it, it will try to get the same place if the binding is done at assembly or load time but during the assembly is done loading is done compilation is done now if it is the execution time binding then your process can be swapped into a different memory space because at that time only the binding takes place and it can be loaded so that is the advantage of the execution time binding major part of spare time 
is the transfer time. Swapping itself says transfer. Swapping itself means transfer. So the transfer time, most of the time is spent on transferring of data. So total transfer time is directly proportional to the amount of memory swapped. So if it is 1, M, 1 KB data only transferred, that much time it will take. If it is 1 MB or 2 MB, then that much amount of time it will take for swapping back and forth. Now, swapping. Here, most of the time is as we have seen, context switch takes place. During swapping, context switch. What is context switch? Already we have seen the storing of the all the required uh, register values, parameters, etc. And uh, return address, etc. Everything you are storing it in a PCB. And then the movement of information from one place to that is that main memory to uh, backing store. So that what that we call it as the here. Here in this case we call it as the context switch. So the context switch time in such a swapping system is very high because the name itself says swap swap data from this to that. Switching the CPU to a another process requires performing a state save of the current process. So current process state is saved and restoring of the incoming process. So that is what we call this context switch time. Let us assume. Uh, let us take an example, a process of size 1 MB and the backing store with a transfer rate of 5 MB per second. So the backing store can transfer, uh, its time is, uh, it has a 5 MB per second. Now the context switch for this will be, uh, let us express this in terms of KB. So 1000 KB divided by 5000 KB. So now we'll get 1 by 5, 200 milliseconds. For In order to transfer 1 MB, it requires uh, the time uh, recorded 200 millisecond. Now, assuming no H6 and only average latency of 8 milliseconds, latency is to see no H6 and latency of 8 millisecond, then the swap time is plus this, you can say 208 millisecond. Let us say swapping out, then swapping in also takes the same time. So that 208 plus 208, which is nothing but Total time swap time is 416 milliseconds for that particular 1 MB data. So for an effective CPU utilization, execution time of process should be longer than the swap time. So uh, there must be some logic where when we want to transfer. At least the execution time is longer than the swap time. If there are a lot of data to be transferred, but the execution is very few means, uh, that is also, uh, it's also not good. Uh, it, uh, the utilization is not done properly. So swap should not take place for the pending pro IO process. So where and all we should not consider swapping. For example, when a process is undergoing some IO pending, it requires some uh, writing to the secondary storage or it, it, it needs some printing. It is giving the, uh, output to printer or it requires some other IO process, then that process should not be touched. It should not be swapped because if it is swapped, let us see what happens. Assume that an IO operation was queued because device was busy. Since the particular uh, device was, IO device was busy, that particular uh, process has been queued for IO. Okay. If process in that case, it is waiting for an IO, it is a pending IO. In that case, if the process P1 is swapped out and the next process coming, because since uh, it is not used, because it is in a, some IO queue wait, if we process that P1, we think that process P1 is idle and if we swap that, then P2 will be swapped in. So what happens? The IO operation might then attempt to use the memory of P2, the process P2, because in that place P1 was there and it is requesting the IO. But since it is not alerted, if that is swapped out because uh, uh, it, it thinks that the IO's, IO, the one which is in the IO queue is uh, taking time idle. So at the time what happens, P2 may be swapped in. So that happens, P2 may not request the IO uh, device. So what happens? Uh, the IO operation might then attempt to use the memory that now belongs to process 2, whereas that IO is only meant for P1. It 
is not for P2. Or else if P2 also has, uh, its request is different from P1. Okay. So, but unnecessarily that I would even try to use the memory of the P2. So, the everything command, everything will be different. So, that is the uh, problem will be there. So, in order to avoid that, never swap a pending I.O. process. Then modified version of swapping is also found in many systems like Unix and Linux. So a common practice is to disable the swapping and start again if the amount of free space falls below your threshold amount. So there are so many free space available in main memory. Don't do swapping. Just try to use the existing space. If the free space threshold, if it is below a particular threshold, very small free space only available, then it can start swapping. So another practice is another practice is swapping portions of the processes rather than the entire process. So only a portion of the process will be, can be traveled in order to decrease the swap time. So this picture shows some schematic view of swapping. Here, yeah, this is the operating system. Suppose this is our uh, process and this is uh, swapped out. And in that position, in that place, user space, process P2 is swapping and it occupies the space and now it starts running. 